We need to wake up as a continent and say, no, we think this is the best way to go. God didn't plant the material in Africa. For, for nothing, reason. yeah. Nuclear energy. Something that scares everybody and only scares people because of ignorance, I'd say. Because from all that I'm hearing lately, this is something that should even be helping Africa go off all this energy poverty and, and, and all that. So tell us about nuclear energy, what it is really. Again, people are afraid of what they don't understand. <laughs> yes. So when you begin to understand, you begin to realign, readjust, and reconceptualize mm -hmm. issues. So, nuclear energy or nuclear power is not different from a thermal reactor or thermal power plant. Really? There's one major difference. How the thermal power plant generates its heat mm -hmm. and how nuclear generates its heat. That's the only difference. Okay. So, with nuclear power plants, we have three main islands. They are not really islands, but again, we have to find the terminology for it. Okay. So, we have what we call the nuclear island. Mm -hmm. That is where heat is generated and steam is produced. Mm -hmm. We have what we call the balance of plants island. That's where the water and the machineries are. And you have what the turbine island. Mm -hmm. And that's where we generate electricity itself. When you go to the thermal plant, there is a balance of plant system and there is a turbine system. Okay. The only thing missing there is the nuclear island. Mm -hmm. Now, how do we do this? We can do this in two major ways with nuclear. We can allow the water to boil around the core mm -hmm. or the heating section of the nuclear power plant okay. or the heating section of the power plant. Let me put it that way. It's much simpler. As the boils, mm -hmm. it's like you putting water in a kettle and when you open it, what do you see? You steam. see steam. And we just tap the steam mm -hmm. into a turbine yeah. to drive the turbine. Okay. So that's what we call a boiling water reactor. So we allow the system to boil, mm -hmm. and then out of it, we get steam. You take the steam. There's also another one uh, called a pressurized water reactor. Mm -hmm. We pressurize the core or the heating section in a space called a reactor pressure vessel. We pressurize at 17 megapascal. Mm -hmm. So we don't allow it to boil. If we don't allow it to boil, what we are getting is we are getting very high temperatures. Okay. And we drive that heated water around what you call a steam generator. So you just don't let it reach 100. So it goes beyond 100 degrees. So why does it not so have steam? There is a law called Charles Law. Okay. That allows you to have a correlation. The higher the pressure, the higher the temperature. Mm -hmm. So if I'm able to raise the temperature, sorry, the pressure, mm -hmm. I'm able to raise the temperature. Okay. Okay. So what then happens is I'm able to go beyond the boiling point of water mm -hmm. and get it to about 300 degrees C. Okay. Once I'm able oh. to get to 300 degrees C, I pass it on to a steam generator. Now, when this steam generator does it, it generates steam. How does it generate steam? It has its own water flow. Okay. So it doesn't mix with the water in the mm -hmm. core or in the heating section. And there are pipes that goes like this. They are very close, I guess. So on this side, you have the heated water from the heating section. Okay. On this side, you have water that is cold that is coming in. And they don't touch. They are in pipes. Yeah. So once they touch like this, the exchange heat. Mm -hmm. And it's like the human being. When you are in bed with your wife or your husband and you are cold, mm -hmm. just cuddle. And then you get warm. And you get warm. Yeah. 
the same process. Mm -hmm. So you have these two pipes coming together and the heated guy will give its heat so the to this guy one. here who is cold. And mm -hmm. it becomes heated, it goes and raise steam with that hot water. Okay. And then come back and then come and take more heat. Oh, and then it goes the like that. Exactly. So it then generates heat to the turbine and the turbine is driven. So there are two different systems that we use and most of the most countries around the world are using what's called the pressurized water reactor okay. system to generate heat or to generate electricity. Wow. So what really would be a setback? <laughs> Why we are not there already? So again, if you don't fully understand systems, anybody tells you whatever they think you believe, you will believe, then we go with it. Okay. So I always ask this question. In Africa, the heating section for the nuclear power plant, mm -hmm. the material that is used for the heating section of the nuclear power plant, over 40% sits in Africa. Oh, this is always a story. <laughs> yes, because yeah. we've been given a certain mindset. Yeah. And that's what we go with, mm -hmm. that certain mindset. Now, 40% of that resource sits in Africa. And I ask you, how much energy do we generate from that in Africa? That's just what I was going to ask. How many countries in Africa? So it's using only one country that is generating energy from this source. One country. One country, South Africa. That's fantastic. And people keep asking, uh, is it because of the whites that's why they are that rich? No, mm -hmm. because they chose the right energy source. Okay. So you go up north and a country like Egypt is building four nuclear power plants. One, two, two three, three, and four. four. Thousand two megawatts each. Okay. A country like Niger, uh -huh. that suffers from, we have been so, I don't know what they call this, <laughs> because it's four hours a day. Oh dear. Yes. A country like Niger is sitting on a lot of that material we use. And they have four hours of power a day. And guess what? A country like France, that takes the material from Niger, from Niger <laughs> has over... 80% of their energy coming no, from No, what is the problem, really? The problem is mindset. Our mindset... Are, are we able to call it ignorance? It's not ignorance. Or it's mindset. Whoever worked on us and whoever worked <laughs> on our leaders did a perfect job when it comes to nuclear. They did wow. a perfect job when it comes to nuclear. So, we've been conditioned that this thing is too dangerous. It's not for you. Yeah. Stay clear. This thing is a bomb. You don't do <laughs> That's it. That's what we know. <laughs> now, when that issue happened in Chernobyl, mm -hmm. that is in Ukraine. Okay. They are operating over six nuclear power plants still in Ukraine. Even Wait, in the world. after they are big challenge. They are operating nuclear power plants. A country like US, where Three Mile Island happened, mm -hmm. are operating more nuclear power plants than any country around the world. A country like Japan, where we had issue with Fukushima, mm -hmm. the Fukushima Daiichi plant, yeah. have restarted their nuclear power plants and they are building advanced nuclear power plants. So who told us nuclear is dangerous? Exactly. And how did we come by that mindset that nuclear is dangerous? If I give you a Kavlas today, would you tell me it's dangerous? Exactly. Because I can actually use the Kavlas to hurt somebody. Mm -hmm. But I can use that same Kavlas for a very good purpose. The material that we use to for the heating source of the nuclear power plant, over 30% or 40% sits in, in Ghana. Africa. In Africa, yeah. A country like France don't have the material. Yet, they use it most. Yet, they use nuclear power plants in their country. Mm -hmm. A country like Russia has a bit of it mm -hmm. 
but they don't have that point. But they use a lot of that material in their country. So whoever formed our mindset for us that yeah. nuclear is dangerous, get a has, has really been successful. But again, I think it's an awakening for the African continent. Mm -hmm. It's an awakening for Ghana. That we don't base our future decisions yeah. on past issues that have happened in other countries that we didn't even suffer from. Mm -hmm. So we need to wake up as a continent and say, no, we think this is the best way to go. God didn't plant the material in mm -hmm. Africa. For, for nothing, no yeah. Or to be gained or to... Benefited of by other people. So we, we need to get to that, that point. And I think gradually, some African countries have realized, I think we made a mistake. Mm -hmm. Relying on our oil, relying on our yeah. sunshine, relying on our wind. We should have gotten this energy source as quickly as possible. It's not too late. It's not too late. It's not too late. Yeah. There is an awakening, a certain nuclear renaissance. Good. That have started. It now needs some maintenance. It needs talking Something about to it needs education. And that's why we are so interested as a program, as Ghana Atomic Energy Commission, as the Ghana Nuclear Power Program, to educate people that guys, this is not bad. Mm -hmm. We've been using this in this country for God knows how long. Mm -hmm. We just want to use it for energy purposes. Yeah. And when you look at Incromer's seven-year development plan, I, was I, I right pray there. that people actually get to it and read it. And we need to get back to the basis. And that's why most people say Nkrumah was ahead of his time. I, I, agree, I agree too. Hydro, nuclear, and then renewables. Even at that time, wow. he was talking renewables. He was talking solar, he was talking wind, he was okay. talking nuclear. And people ask, what is material that this guy is talking about? I'm talking about uranium. Uranium? uranium That's is found, what is so dominant oh, right in Africa. Yes. It's found everywhere you mine gold, there's uranium. Oh, this was dominant in the Wakanda movie, right? <laughs> yeah. It's everywhere you mine gold, you have uranium. Everywhere you, you mine, mine gold. gold. It could be there, sitting in Ghana. In fact, we've done some work at Atomic Energy Commission where we did an assessment of cement. Okay. And you have deposits of uranium there. Wow. But it's in very small quantity, so its mining doesn't become economical. But it's with us. No, but if we do explore it, it may be there. It may... Again, it takes some money. Yeah, it to takes explore, some to... to do the exploration and all those things. Okay. So there is whatever we are running away from is with us. It's in our homes. Wow. It's, it's rather beautiful. <laughs> I mean, I, I always say that it's up to us to always count the bottle half empty of half full. Mm -hmm. And if we look at the positive side of things, we should be dancing to this. Of course. Yes. Of course. It's, it's something we need to get along, but it, it will take some time. We've been, we've been so, very well. This is solving our energy deficit, and this is wealth. So it's not just solving energy deficit, but it's changing the fabric of our economy. I'll give you an example, and then you can then go on with other, or want to jump into other areas. In 1950s, okay. Ghana's GDP per capita, as compared to South Korea, mm -hmm. Our uh, uh, GDP per capita was over $100, and $100 per okay. person. South Korea was about 80 At a point in time, we, we lended money or we gave grants to South Korea. We did? We did. When you go to South Korea, there is, I don't think it's a hotel or a building, they're named after Ghana. Okay. For that reason. Because of that support. Yes. Now, there is it. South Korea took a decision. Yes. That... We think going forward, this is an energy source that has the potential to change us okay. as people. As I speak to you, South Korea GDP per capita is standing around 33,000. 
and GDP. Okay. It's not even up to 3,000 yet. <laughs> All the big components in the nuclear industry around the world yes. is manufactured in South Korea. We count as a retrogression. So why are they now the biggest? Because they have an energy source that is cheap to produce that big component, those big components of power plants. They call it heavy industry. What? When I show you pictures of those heavy industry that are melting steel, mm -hmm. that are melting iron ore to make steel, that are doing... All from, all from nuclear. All from nuclear. Because it's a dense energy source. And it operates 18 to 24 months before oh. you shut down.